Hi, I'm Joe Stevens, field sales engineer with Interlogix. Welcome to my video shop. Today I'm going to show you how to integrate our video with the True Portal Access Control System. This allows the end user to view recorded video that's directly associated with access control events such as valid or invalid card reads. That way they don't have to search the DVR separately and it becomes much more easy, intuitive and easier for our user to find the video of interest. Now we can integrate up to four DVRs on a system and up to 64 cameras. As I speak, we have integration capability for the TrueVision TVR31 and the TVR10. Now this list will be added to as we introduce newer products to the market, so be sure and check with an Interlogix representative or your distributor to see what current models of DVRs and NVRs are compatible with TruePortal. Now there's a few things we need to keep in mind before we get started. Number one, the user needs to be prepared to use Internet Explorer as their browser because we utilize ActiveX functionality in our video and that's best supported by Internet Explorer. Number two, you should be able to use the browser to access the True Portal system and DVR or DVRs individually from the computer you're going to be administering with. Now assuming you want to view remotely over the internet, that means you'll have to have your IP or DDNS account established and your router port forwarding set up to both the True Portal system and the video recorders. Now one of the ports that True Portal uses is port 80 and that means that you'll have to set up the recorder to use an HTT port, HTTP port other than port 80 such as port 81 and of course with the appropriate port forwarding. Now I'll show you a little bit about what I mean when we get on the computer. Number three, keep in mind that the video is stored in the DVR, not in the True Portal system. That means that once the video is overwritten on the DVR, it's no longer available. So if the event needs to be archived, the user should archive it from the DVR as soon as possible. Okay, let's switch over to my computer and have some fun. Okay, we made the transition over to the computer here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to verify that I can in fact uh, connect to both the True Portal Access Control System and the DVR independently over the internet. And the way I'm going to do that is I've connected to a little Verizon hotspot here uh, that allows me to be totally off my local area network and truly simulate or actually in fact be on it, coming in through the internet onto the system. That way I can know for a fact that everything's as it should be. So bringing up Internet Explorer here and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to the True Portal system and the, my outside IP address or my public IP address the one that uh, has been associated or given to me by my ISP is 71.196.246.135 now I didn't put HTTP HTTP on this, so I should have, but since I connected this before, I'm just going to use this drop down, connect to that, and you'll notice that by not stipulating a port, it assumes that I'm using port 80, and that is what is for that is what's forwarding forwarded to the true portal system. So this is a good sign. We'll to continue to this website. The little Verizon card is a little bit slower than a true broadband connection, but for what we're doing here, good enough. And so we can log into the true portal system via the internet. Now, I don't have tab browsing in, uh, right here set up on this particular version of Internet uh, Explorer, so I'm going to go here and just start a new window. And now I'm going to connect to the DVR and make sure that we can view video. Same IP address, 71.196.246.135. And this time, we're going to specify port 81 because I've set up my HTTP port in the DVR to work on port 81. 
So since this is already filled out for me, I'll just go ahead and click on it. There's our login screen. Good sign. All right, we have six cameras on this DVR. As I'm going to use two of them. I'm going to use the front door camera because I have a door in my access control system called front door. I'm going to tie that to, to that point. And this is TS door, stands for top secret door. And I have, as you can tell, the reader for my access control system right here on the top secret door. So we'll go ahead and kill this. Let's just get into the programming on the true portal now. So the first place I'm going to go is down to system administration. I'm going to select devices and now I can see my entire system here. Here's my system. Here's the system controller. I can expand that down and then I can see the onboard door controller. I can expand that down and see my two doors. Here's my front door. Here's my secret door. And if I expand that down, I can see the readers that are associated with each door. Now what I want to do, actually what I need to do now is go on down to video devices, select video devices, and add a DVR. Now in my case, I have an actual TVR30. You probably would be using a TVR31. Uh, if you're using a TVR31, just go ahead and select TVR30. The codec is the same. It'll work just fine. So I've selected that, and I can call it whatever I want, and I'm going to call it my Office TVR30. And here's where I put in the IP address. Now again, I'm viewing this remotely, so I'm going to use the public IP address and stipulate the port. So again, it's 71.196. 246.135 and I'm going to select video port 81 because that's the port we're using for our DVR. I'm going to leave the video stream at high because I get a little better quality of that and this is the login credential for the DVR which happens to be in my case admin and the password and I said accept my changes. Now I've got my DVR set up, I need to add some cameras. So again, as long as this is highlighted, I go up here to Add and Camera. First is New Camera, and I'm going to call this one my front door camera. That happens to be input number two on my DVR, and I'm going to leave the 15 second pre-event playback the way it is and hit accept change. Now I'm going to add the camera for my secret door. So again, highlight the DVR, hit add, camera. This will be secret door cam. And it happens to be on DVN, DVR input number six. Go ahead and accept changes. So now I have my DVR and my camera sit in here, but I really haven't linked them to anything. So the way I link them is to come up to the readers. I want to be able to see anybody that presents a card, whether they get accepted through the door or not. So <clears throat> here's my front door. Here's the reader associated with the front door. I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to come over here to link cameras and do the drop down. There's my front door camera that I just created. Select it and hit accept changes. On my secret door, I'm going to go to the reader associated with it. Select the camera, which is going to be my secret door camera, and accept changes. I've now linked those cameras, that DVR, and those two cameras with those two door readers. Next thing we have to do is come up here to monitoring.
and I'm going to go drop down here to video layouts. And what a video layout is, is basically the configuration of how we want to view our cameras. Okay, so I'm going to hit add, and I'm going to call this, I'm going to make a single camera view of just my top secret door. So I'm going to call this top secret layout and here's my video layout types I can go one by one or two by two which we commonly call a quad three by three or four by four which would be 16 cameras up or I can do a kind of a custom camera layout which is one larger camera and then five smaller cameras around it so this one I'm going to do a single camera view and that I drop down here into this pane and I choose the camera which is going to be my secret door and I accept changes. Now I'm also for convenience going to create another layout. This one I'm going to call both cams and this time I'm going to select a 2x2 or a quad layout even though I'm not really using all four cameras and I'm going to put the front door on this one and I'm going to put the secret door on this one and we'll save our changes. Now right now I'm going to walk on over and present my credential to this card to the uh, reader on my secret door and you should be able to see when I do that um, the event scrolled down here. Now, when I go up here to my event screen, here is where I presented my card. I didn't open the door because I can't open the door because it's top secret and you can't see what's behind it, right? So I had a no entry common, uh, entry here, no access. Now, if I were to click on this right now, I probably wouldn't really be able to pull up that video, and here's why. The, video, the DVR buffers video for a short period of time. Therefore, it's unavailable to the True Portal Access Control System until it gets through the buffer. So, what I'm going to do while we're waiting for that video to come through the buffer, it only takes a minute or so, there's one other thing I want to mention to you. You'll notice that everything's timestamped here. This timestamp is coming from the uh, True Portal Access Control System. If our time differs on the DBR, it makes it very, very hard for the True Portal Access System and the DBR to coordinate and get you the proper video clip. So I highly recommend you use a time server for both the True Portal Access Control System and the DBR. Let me just kind of show you where that is. If I go down here into System Administration again, and I come over to Date and Time, I have my time zone here. I have my current date and time. And I have a checkbox here that says synchronize with NTP server. What that does is it tells the system to look for a time server on the network. And that time server will give a signal and synchronize the time. Now, if you have a larger business, they may have a network with a dedicated time server on that network. Smaller business, businesses typically don't have that. So what we can do is we can use a government time standard server. And I like to use time, T-I-M-E, dot N-I-S-T, dot gov. And once you type that in, you can hit sync now and actually synchronize that, uh, the true portal system. Now you'll find similar settings in the DVR under network settings. Just look for NTP server. And again, enter the time, dot N-I-S-T, dot gov and synchronize it. Make sure your time zones are the same, of course. And that way, the, the uh, uh, True Portal system and the DVR will both be on the same time, and we, don't have to have any, or we won't have any problems pulling up any kind of video. So now, let's go back to our video event screen, and let's take a look at where I presented my card, and we'll click on the icon here. And now you can see 
that I my time and date stamped tells who I was and it's bringing up the video that should be associated with that event. Remember we do have the pre-playback time. And here I am. I present my card. You can see the reader is flashing. The door would have opened had I opened it. And that's how we get the recorded or the uh, um, or playback the recorded video. Now you'll notice that when I'm here, I'm actually back in live video, I think now. But uh, I also have my DVR controls here, and depending on the DVR. If you have a DVR, for example, that can't do reverse playback, the reverse playback won't be, won't be uh, or will be grayed out. But I can do single step forward. I can speed up the playback. I can come over here back to live view. I can do playback. If I if I click on playback, I can go back two minutes, five minutes, or I can speci uh, specify a date and time. Over here, I can pull up presets. If this were a PTZ camera, I could be able to pull up presets and, have, and tell it to go to specific presets. Or I can just say, play, enable the PTZ. If I click on this, this isn't a PTZ camera, so I'm not going to do it. But then I could actually move the PTZ camera around in this pane. That's how we pull up the recorded view. And you can see that it's really, really easy to see what video is associated with a specific door event. Now, if I want to just do a little peek in and do live video monitoring, I can just come in here to monitoring. And now I come down to video. And I choose a layout. Remember, we made the layouts. There's my one for both cams. Here's my one for my top secret door. So if I check my top secret door, there's my top secret door live view. If I change the layout, and select both cams. Here's my front door camera. Here's my top secret door camera. And you'll notice again that when my whenever my mouse uh, got a little fallout from the Verizon card there, but whenever I hover my mouse on this, I have the same control functionality that I did on the other pane. So, pretty easy. Uh, makes it really, really nice and easy for our end users to view the video that's associated with the door event. And it's a piece of cake to program. So let's get on out of here. So, as you can see, that was a pretty painless process. But if you do run into any snags, give our world-class tech support guys a call. They can be reached at 855-286-8889 and an option to on the menu. They know their stuff and they're eager to help you. That's it for me. I'm Joe Stevens for Interlogics, reminding you to be nice out there. Somebody may be watching.